Hello everyone, this is Ansh from Bitten Tech and in this video, I am going to talk about a special type of technique to gain access to a website database. Today we are going to talk about SQL injection. We will know what it is and how does it work and how losses can occur due to a website with this technique. So let's get started. First of all, before discussing SQL injection, we will need to understand the structure of a website. A website has basically two components, an HTML component and a database. The HTML component is the building block of a website. Most of you already know that websites are built in HTML language. Web developers can also use CSS or cascading style sheets to make the websites look attractive. But the point is HTML makes a web page. Now every website is built to interact with people. It is built to take inputs and give outputs. So there should be some arrangement to store the web page data. Otherwise it will be of no use. So here the website database stores all the data related to the website. The user inputs, authentication tokens, the history of visits, all the people logged in, the passwords, image files, media files, files downloaded, files uploaded, link histories and many more. The database is stored on a web server on which the website is hosted. The database is built in SQL language also called structured query language. If you are familiar with SQL language, you will understand this concept easily. Now coming to the main point. The major objective of this SQL injection attack is to get access to the database of the website. Since the database has all the data including the administrator passwords, that is the login password of the owner. There can be many other reasons too. The attacker of the website can access the admin page to edit the website by filling the web form. The web form includes username and password to be filled. Now what happens back in the database is, when you input something in the input field, the SQL command select is implemented in the database. The select query is made and the system checks in the database for the real password. If the input matches with the password, the user gets the access. The command is something like select star from users where user id is equal to something and password is equal to something. If the password doesn't match, the access is denied. Now there are some websites which don't have this mechanism to block any other input. They are said to have SQL injection vulnerability. In this case, any SQL query can be fed into the input and the system will execute it. For example, an attacker can input a query to download the entire database, delete the database, modify the database and also he can make a condition always true. If a password condition is made always true, so no matter if any password is entered, the server will grant the access. Like for a password, the system accepts only one stored in the database. But if a query is made to drop the password table, the system will start to take any password. The attacker can also comment out certain commands which require additional authentication to bypass them. In this way, the attacker can easily get access to the database. Now he can know all the passwords of the people logged in the website. The various tables and their contents, the internal structure of the website and any other information related to the website. This method is called SQL injection. You inject a query in the database to manipulate it and gain unauthorized access to it. This is the most dangerous type of website attack for an SQL based database. One way of preventing this kind of attacks is to block the unnecessary inputs other than username and password. But in this case, security measures like SSL 
and IPsec will not protect you from an SQL injection attack. You need to find some other way to tackle them. SQL injection commands are made at runtime or dynamically, so avoid dynamic input commands. Prevent your database with web application firewall. And also don't reveal, though accidentally, any intimate information whatsoever to anyone unless it is unavoidable. Websites can suffer huge data and financial losses, so take proper countermeasures. So that was all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any suggestions or queries, do let me know in the comment section. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss a video on cybersecurity and technology. So until next video, stay tuned, keep watching and goodbye.